Greetings, citizens of Nerdtropolis. Sean Taj here, the mayor of Nerdtropolis, and my guest today is Colin Ford, who stars in the upcoming movie, The Hill. Hey, Colin. Hey, how's it going? A great, it's a pleasure to meet you. I really enjoy the movie The Hill. To me, it's basically like a two-part movie. The first part really showing Ricky Hill's childhood and upbringing. I love the scenes there with the siblings. I kind of get like a Stand By Me totally. moments in the first part. Love that. Yeah, I definitely love that. And part two is like the tough journey for Ricky to achieve his goals. So when you read the script, what stood out to you about the story? I think what stood out to me, you know, first and foremost was uh, that it was a true story. And so immediately I'm like, oh wow, this is a true story. I've I haven't heard of Ricky before, so I immediately was like, what can I learn? You know, through through learning about Ricky and his story, you, you realize what a passionate uh, person he is and the self-belief that he has in himself and, um, and in baseball and, and in his faith and how they're somehow kind of linked together. You know, I, I was just so drawn in. Um, really by Ricky's mindset and by the way that he chose to live his life. Uh, it's in, it's inspirational. I think that we can all learn a little bit from that work ethic, right? Um, and so I wanted to do everything I could to, to bring his story to life. Luckily, you know, Jeff Salentano saw uh, what I saw in, you know, Ricky and he saw in my performance and asked me to be a part of the film and even better yet to get to work with Dennis Quaid. I mean, there's so many factors. I mean, you can look at any one of those things and go, oh my gosh, this is a reason to do the film. This is a reason to do the film. And then you have it written by Angelo Pizzo and, you know, Scott Marshall Smith. And you're like, oh my gosh, there's another reason. So I couldn't pick just one, but a cumulative of all. Many great reasons. You just mentioned one of them, Dennis Quaid, who plays your father in the movie. He's a fellow historian. That's where Neutropolis is based out of Houston. Oh, right on. Uh, yeah, and so uh, his performances are always great in everything he does. Um, how was it to work with him, and did he give you any advice? It was incredible to work with him. I mean, I have to say I was a little nervous because I was such a big fan, and I've been watching Dennis Quaid films my entire life. Um, so getting to work with him was like, a definite dream come true. You know, I actually had one of my early auditions. I had a callback, uh, and I got to go in and read with Dennis, and I was really nervous for that. But at the end of my audition, he, you know, he said, like, you know, good job, and gave me, like, some words of encouragement, and um, I was, you know, less nervous at that point. But but fast forward to, you know, a few years later when we actually got to go make the film, because it was a period, uh, quite a bit of period of time between the process of auditioning and, and, and getting to go to set, start filming. Um, I was like nervous again, showing up on set. <laughs> uh, but he was so great. He made me feel so comfortable and relaxed. And um, I have to say, like, I just, uh, he has like a presence about him and in the way that he handles himself is very calm, but very prepared. Uh, I think that I just would observe that and go, man, that's, I gotta, I, I wanna be like that when I grow up. You know, it's just, it's just that level of expertise that you know, only experience will grant you, I feel like. Yeah, you got the thumbs up from the legend himself and Pretty you're doing cool. great things and impressing everybody. So it's, <laughs> it's really wonderful. Oh, thank you. What similarities do you see between you and Ricky? Wow. You know, I think that me and Ricky are similar in the sense that once we set our uh, mind on something, we 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 got to go after it. I very much uh, am a believer of like leaving it all on the table, giving something. If I try something, I give it 110 percent or I don't do it at all. And I think that Ricky uh, does everything no matter what, 110%. So trying to keep up with that is is, is similar for me. Um, but I think, yeah, I mean, I think that in my life, like I've had people doubt me or, or and I've had family members, um, you know, assume that, you know, when I started acting at a younger age, like this wasn't what I was gonna do in my career. But for me, in my mind, like this is always what I was gonna do. Like I never had a second guess about it. It was never a doubt to me. It was never like, if it works out, if it doesn't work out, like it was just like, this is what I'm gonna do. And I feel like very much so that Ricky is the same way about baseball. He says, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, and so just through like faith and determination and a little bit of <laughs> luck, uh, you know, here I am. A little bit of Ricky and everybody, I feel like, you know, yeah. and if you can really strive to be like Ricky, you can do a lot of great things. While watching this movie, I just pick up on some fun stuff. Do you know what movie was playing when you walked out of the movie theater with the character Gracie? Do you remember what was on the marquee? By oh, chance with it? um... I, cl I I've I've clocked it before. Will you remind me though? What is it? Yeah, it's American Graffiti. So a little trivia okay. there. Yeah, American. Gra have you seen that movie, American Graffiti? Not recently, but I've seen it. It's a good movie, and so I thought it was really fun that also your character, you know, Ricky drives uh, a Mach One in the movie. Right. 
Did you get to really drive that in the in the film? I did, I did, and uh, was, uh, we had some troubles with the car. It wasn't a perfectly running vehicle, and as you know, most cars from the '60s and '70s. Uh, are uh, and I actually own a 65 Mustang uh, and so I, I they're having a hard time turning it over you know pulling the choke getting that carburetor to fire off and I was able to do it <laughs> only me and like one of, one of the other car guys could get that thing running because <laughs> but it was fun that's awesome yeah I'm a car guy too I have a Slimit satellite oh, it's actually nice. a police car what color it was like it was it's just white and black. It's like the Adam Twelve um, type of police car. It was used in Marshall, Texas. Do you have like the lights and everything still? Yeah, on it has like yeah, it has the lights. It has the the be beacon on top. This would have been perfect for this movie, actually. That's right. About it. That's <laughs> right. On there. So it's just really cool to see some you know car influences in this in this true story. And a couple of other fun facts. One of the donations as Ricky's trying to get the money for his surgery, one of the customers when he's working at the garage barn gives him fifty dollars. You know how much fifty dollars is today? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. lot. I looked up, it's like $340. That's crazy. That was And a that's a lot for somebody to give, especially at that time. For sure. For sure. And then second, um, Randy Hauser's character, Ray, cuts a check for almost, I think it was right over $4,000. Lots of cash. Lots of cash, which is like close to $30,000 today. So wow. just, just to put things in perspective of how willing people were back then to donate to Ricky's causes. I thought that was very important to, to make note of. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I mean, I think that lends to the type of like community that they were all in. I mean, you could see that, you know, uh, you know what we didn't see on screen, but like obviously people know who Ricky is and they see him within the community. And like, I think the camaraderie and coming around someone for a greater cause, I think that's a beautiful message. Yeah, there's a lot of beautiful messages in this movie. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, it's a two part movie. It's really two stories interwinded. It's great to see a young version of Ricky and then a grown up version and see where it leads him to. Yeah, and I want to give a little shout out to Jesse Berry, who plays young Ricky. He does such an amazing job. And this was actually one of his his, his first projects he's ever been a part of. And you wouldn't know that uh, if I didn't say that to you today. It looks like he'd you know been doing it since he you know could walk. Uh, he's a very talented young actor. I gotta agree, he stole a lot of the scenes. <laughs> you know, he's great in this film. And lastly, I gotta kind of mention, you know, you got him playing a younger version of yourself in this. You play a younger version of Jared pa Padalecki twice. Yeah. In Walker and Supernatural, you know. So you got a great relationship with him. Every time he calls you, it's just to play a younger version of himself. <laughs> so how was your experience being on Walker and Supernatural? Yeah, no, it's great. Look, I, I from the moment I went on Supernatural, I was like already a fan. My mom and I used to watch it when I was like in middle school. We'd watch it in in uh, our living room with like all the curtains open and like all the lights are on because you know I was so scared. Uh, no, but it was amazing. Like I love getting to go and work with Jared. I mean, the Supernatural stuff was like my entire childhood. I just loved doing that. Every single time I got to go back, it was like I never left. And then when Jared called and, and you know said there was an opportunity for us to maybe get to work together on Walker, I immediately said anything I need to do. You let me know. He's like, you need to cut your hair. I was like, I got you. Or cut it. Whatever you need to do. It was incredible. And I and I think that's also why like it was. It's so ex I started doing this at a young age. It's really exciting for me um, to see someone like like Jesse Berry, who's a young actor, who's coming in. He's getting started in his career. I'm very excited to see in 10 years and 15 years if he continues to choose to act, what he's going to do in the future. Um, and, and you know. Maybe maybe we'll have a little arrangement like Jared and I have where I call him up and go, hey, man, I got a gig. Can you do it? Uh, and that would be so cool. You know, I, I would be lucky to get to have him in the future. Yeah, and I'll maybe all three of y'all together. Too, exactly. What the heck? Full circle. <laughs> Great performance. The Hill is amazing. And uh, look forward to seeing what you do next. Oh, thank you so much, man. Take care. Once again, this is Sean Taj, the mayor of Nertropolis. And stay tuned for more movie news, reviews, interviews and trailers.